So if you had to guess where I was right now, you would have no idea because it's so black. But what I thought I'd do is come out for an astro shoot and take you with me and talk you through really basics of how you get started in doing a Milky Way shot and some star trails. Basics, beginner's guide to astro. Hey, sorry, I thought I'd just jump in. That guy is a clown. I'm going to interject through this video just to add some helpful tips and I hope this experience benefits you. The sky just looks incredible. There's not a cloud anywhere. It's jet black apart from the stars that are just popping and it is always a little bit eerie when you come out on an astro shoot because if you came here in the day, not a problem. You come here at night and it feels terrifying. I'm gonna go set up, go down to the location where I am. I can't walk and carry the camera because I will trip over because I can't see anything because it's so bright the light I've got on the top of the camera. So let's get into it, it's gonna be fun. I live on the Gold Coast in Australia, which is usually a steady 24. And when I walked out the door, it was at least minus 16. It was probably minus 30. It was so cold. So I pulled out the old beanie. I'm of the school of thought that all you need is a t-shirt and a beanie and you're good. I did put the hoodie on tonight. Um, and one of the key things when you come out to do astro is to be prepared. I've done a whole astro shoot. I turned up, it was like one o'clock in the morning and I realized after two shots, two click clicks, my battery died. I had no, my spare was flat and I spent the evening carrying one of my mate's stuff all around kind of being his roadie which he thoroughly enjoyed thought was quite amusing so always come prepared and that's everything from what you wear to your gear we're about halfway there let's keep moving I've come down to the water's edge of the place where I'm going and the level of water is 98% there's this little island that I wanted to get out to that I figured would be underwater a little bit it's underwater a lot, underwater a lot. however I don't know if you can see this but I'm wearing waders and I really want to get out there. I've kind of come too far. I'd show you, but you, I just tried with the camera. You can't see anything. I'm going to venture out there and the next time I speak to you will be when we're out on the island. Wish me luck. Let me bring you up to speed about what's happened. I waded out. I got about a third of the way out and realized that it was just too, too deep. So I retreated back, walked around the bank and I think I've got a really good spot that I'll explain in just a minute. I use photo pills. You can see where the center of all the star things, uh, the star tracking happens. And so if you get that center, it looks amazing. I would wanted to get out in the island and shoot back this way so that I could get some reflections in the water, but that's not gonna happen tonight. But you can see the Milky Way kind of cuts right through that center, that circle. So that's what we're gonna aim for today. It's about, I say today, it's tonight. Um, it's about half past midnight. I had to wait till, it's probably a bit later than that actually, till the moon went down so that it gets black. Um, we're about a, a week into the moon phase and you have to wait for there to be no moon, otherwise the Milky Way just doesn't jump out at it. So I'm gonna set up now my star trail shot and I'll talk you through what that looks like. I've set my gear up here to take the following photo. Let me talk you through what I did. I set up my tripod, then I put my camera on it, and then I need to compose my shot. The way I compose my shot is I guess, I take a photo, I realign, I take a photo, until I'm happy with the composure. So this is the composure that we're going with. You see the Milky Way, and to the left of the Milky Way, the stars are gonna rotate. We're gonna do a star trail. But I am gonna move my shutter speed up to 30. I'm gonna take my ISO down to 200. It's on 1.8. And look, if you've got a kit lens, that'll be like a 3.5, maybe a four. That's fine, go with that. You'll still get okay result. Then I plug in my remote control shutter release. And what I'm gonna do in a moment is I'm gonna turn all the lights off, I'm gonna engage and then flick it up. So you do that and flick it up. And what happens then is it takes repetitive shots. So it gets to the end of its 30 second timer and takes another shot. And what basically happens is the stars gradually loop across the sky. When you're outside and you're shooting Astra, you can't see much at all. 
But if you want to get some emphasis on the foreground that you won't be able to see in the final exposure, you want to get a wide angle torch and just light it up. And you can light it up in parts, that's fine, because it all comes out at the end exposure. But that way you have a brighter foreground to work with when it comes to your final images. Adds intrigue and interest to what your photo ends up looking like. When you shoot Astro, you wanna take your aperture down to the lowest possible number. In my case, with the Star Trail shot, I'm using a 20 mil. Uh, it's a prime lens that shoots at 1.8. That's, it's, I bought it for Astro, it's amazing at Astro. It sucks a heap of light in, um, but you keep your ISO low for a Star Trail so as you pick up the different colors in the night sky, you'll see that later on. With the Milky Way shot, you bump your ISO right up because it's a single shot that you want to take in as much light that is in the sky. Always with Astro, a low shutter speed, 30 seconds. You can go four or five minutes or 40 minutes, I've done before. The longer you leave it open, the noisier it gets and you can't get rid of all those little bits of noise. That's why it's important to layer a Star Trail shot. This is one I took a long, long time ago, which was a 40 minute exposure. And well, you can see the difference between that and what we're going for today. So what I'm gonna do now is use this camera that I'm vlogging on to do a Milky Way shoot. Now we're filming on my phone, set up my camera. It's pointing out into the darkness where you can't see anything that's happening, but that's okay. So what you first wanna do is position your tripod. Sometimes you need to lessen one of the legs to make it sturdy, make sure it's sturdy. Sometimes it's windy, like tonight, a little bit windy. So you need to make sure it's, um, it's stable. Once it's stable, then you put your camera on top. Once your camera's on top, then you turn it on. So I take the Milky Way by bumping up my ISO to 3200. I shoot with 1.8 eight aperture so you shoot with the lowest aperture that your lens will do and the widest it will go and a 20 second shutter speed but with the 20 seconds the stars don't move 30 seconds they do move let me interject here because he is making a mess of this and there's quite a simple way to calculate what shutter length you should put on a shot it's called the 500 rule so if you have a full frame camera what you want to do is take the number 500 and divide it by your focal length. That will give you the total amount of seconds that you should expose for. If you have a crop sensor, take the number 500, divide it by your focal length, divide it by 1.6. And that gives you the number that you want to work with in relation to how long to extend the shutter so your stars don't move. If they're extended for too long on a Milky Way shot, the stars blur and streak a little bit and it affects the quality and the sharpness of your image. With your settings, put it in manual mode then take it to 20 seconds. Once I get my focus right, I'm gonna compose the shot. But the neatest little trick I found to focus is you bump up your ISO so your live view can see what's happening. Can you see that? This is the display and it's already a bit light here. It's the only way your live view can pick up things. And once that happens, then you zoom in on your live view as far as you can possibly zoom in. You put your focus to manual and you manually move your focus ring so that the stars become as small as possible. Now you want small because if they're big, they're blurry. So if they're big, they look, they'll be just a mess. So you want to make them as small. So you just go back and forward. It's around the infinity mark, but you go back and forward until it's really pinpoint sharp. And that's when you know you're good to go. Let's say we're outside. We're looking through our camera and the night sky is in front of us. As you can see, that's just a shot of a night sky that I took. Now, what you do is you see this little plus button then you live view on, you hit your plus button, and then you hit your plus button again. And that's zoomed in to this degree. Then you put it on manual focus. So take away off auto, put it on manual on your lens. And you gradually turn it 
until see how those those stars go from you think that's in focus and then you go tighter and tighter and tighter goes out of focus and then you come back and what you're looking for is the smaller and the brightest they can be so too much so i would lock it in just there now, this is a computer screen right so that's why there's limitations of this but at that point if you look on top here we're actually short of infinity so sometimes they say just set it to infinity and it'll be right but actually sometimes it's here or it's here when you shoot astro it's important to work out where the milky way is it's pretty obvious on a really dark night it's the big strip of stars across the sky it moves gradually through the night which changes your composition so you need to change with it when you're shooting the milky way it's always good to take a shot and then either move your camera or move the direction your camera is pointing in to see if you can ca capture a more effective and interesting shot. It's such a good night for Astro. There's not a single cloud in the sky. We're away from the city, so it's all really dark. And I've been chasing the Milky Way with my uh, second camera. I'd recommend photo pills to anybody who is contemplating getting into this in any sort of way it tells you when the moon goes up and goes down it tells you when the sun goes up and goes down and when golden hour is and isn't but then there's the artificial reality that you saw me playing with before that shows you the movement of the stars the movement of the milky way its position you can lock it in to um to see where the milky way will be at any time at any date at any place on the planet it's an incredible piece of um of software and i think it's like only 15 bucks so i would encourage you to um to get that and have a good play you can plan your trip before you even step foot outside the house well it's been an hour and 45 minutes and i think i'm done it's <laughs> wind is blowing a gale i think the shot is looking all right it's funny how you can be in complete blackness and be engaged in creativity it's just this weird juxtaposition that i can sit out here and be creating something that i won't even see for like a day or two but right now is when it's happening it's just a fascinating thing so i'd encourage you to give it a go i'd also encourage you to bring somebody along with you uh, tonight um it wasn't able to happen for a variety of reasons and uh, that's cool but i'd encourage you to, to yeah take someone along with you enjoy the company of somebody else when you do it and it's also less daunting to be in the dark when you're with someone as opposed to by yourself with the lake and the forest making weird weird noises anyway i'm going to see you back at home when it's a bit warmer and a bit more cozy to finish off this project there's actually a program you can purchase for free is that a purchase you can get for free download for free called star stacks and star stacks gives you the ability to finalize your images put them all in this program and it stacks them together and you can control how light that's stacked or how dark that stacked stacked and what happens is you then gradually see the movement of the stars so there you have it successful star trails and milky way shooting i'm going to show you the images in just a moment so it's not like you're going to go home empty-handed you'll get to see what the final product was as i'm sure you're like oh what is it i hope that was helpful and that you learn from the mistakes that i've made and the learning that i've done if you're loving these videos, subscribe to this channel. Come with me on these adventures as we discover more things about photography and we learn together. Keen to know how you've gone with your Astro and your Milky Way shot. So um, put it in the description below. Feel free to offer any thoughts and insights that you have about how to take a really good image. And I will see you in the next video.